it. And uh, today, I want to show off this beautiful early 1980s Yamaha G3. Now, a lot of people would think that, wow, piano from the early 1980s, that's really old. But really, in piano years, it's not that old. Uh, 1930s would be really old, 1940s, but 1980s, really not. As a matter of fact, a set of strings in a piano is a lifespan of about 30, 35 years. And one of the things that we do here at Piano Outlet is we give you all new strings with every piano. Uh, this particular piano came out of a home in Japan, because that's basically where we get our pianos from. In Japan, just about every family owns a piano. They uh, highly encourage the children to learn at an early age music, and so therefore just about every family has a piano. And then the other thing about the Japanese people, they don't buy anything used. So pianos have a very, very uh, reasonable value in used condition, and what we do is uh, we look for pianos that come out of homes that have had very little use, Contrary to popular belief, many most pianos that are made sit in homes and are hardly used, and those are the ones that we buy. Uh, we don't buy any pianos that have come out of commercial institutions, schools, churches, things like that, because they just require way too much work to get in this type of condition. So basically what you have is you have a piano like this, a Yamaha Grand Piano that's purchased in the early 1980s, maybe had a few years of very light use, and then it's just been relegated to the corner of someone's living room and uh, just this collected dust. And those are the pianos that, uh, that we like to buy. We get them very reasonably. And uh, when they come in, all they really need is cosmetic work, some regulation, brand new set of strings, and you have yourself basically a brand new piano. So uh, with this particular one, I'm gonna open it up and also show you the proper way to open up a grand piano. A lot of people, what they'll, what they'll do is they'll go like this and walk around, but really your first piano lesson is going to be over here, you're supposed to stand on this side of the piano. You open up the lid this way. And then when you lift this part up, it's very important that the prop, this is called a prop stick, is always at a 90 degree angle to the lid. So you see these two cups here. So the, uh, the cup that's further into the lid gets the large part of the prop stick and then small one get this one. And if you notice, it's always going to be a 90 degree angle. So one thing you don't want to do is go like this. And you'll see a lot of pictures of piano with this in the wrong place. And that's very dangerous because this could pop out and the lid could fall down. So you really want it just like this. Uh, the other parts of the piano that you have here is going to be the music desk. This is called a music desk. And this slides in and out like this, okay? And um, the thing that's really important is that if you go to close the, and open the piano, the music desk has to be all the way pushed back. And there are these uh, stoppers here that, uh, that allow you to push the uh, music stick desk back and uh, it won't go any further. And the reason for that is, is that it leaves this area open so that when you close the piano, close it now, and you see this part is called a lock bar. The reason why it's called a lock bar, it has a lock, okay, with a keyhole. So when you put this down, it goes right into place here, okay? Now, if the music stand is pulled out, what's gonna happen? It's gonna hit the music stand, you're gonna get a scratch. So you don't wanna do that, okay? So the other thing too is when you pull this out, one hand on either side, and you pull it straight out, don't, also, don't pull it in or out with the keyboard cover open. Because if you see here, the keyboard cover, if you pull this out with the keyboard cover open, what's gonna happen? This is gonna scratch the top here. So you wanna make sure this is always in the closed position, okay? The other thing too, a lot of people don't realize, and I always see a lot of photographs of pianos, especially like in, in home decorated magazines, is that what people do, what people do is, is that they'll open the lid like this, which is horrible because it's not supposed to be open like this. All the tension is on the hinge here, and that's very, very bad. So it's very, very important that before you open the lid, you fold the top part back, open it this way. There you go. Okay, so now let's talk about a little bit about the inside of the piano. Paul's piano in Virginia. 
who's he's been waiting a long time. We've gone through this pandemic here, and it's been almost impossible to get any work done. Who's coming to work? Who's not coming to work? All this stuff. Let's not go into it. But anyway, uh, this particular piano, as all our pianos do, all go out, all brand new tuning pins, brand new strings. Everything on the inside of the piano gets cleaned. Incidentally, these are all brand new tuning pins. If you look at them, they're nice, bright, and shiny. The other thing that's very important is that they're all, the coils are nice and high off of the plate. So basically what that gives you is about another 30, 40 years of use with this piano without ever having to worry about a loose tuning pin. That is like one of the most important things that you want to look at buying a piano, even more so than if there's some scratches, that's nothing. I mean, that's a very easy thing to fix is some scratches, but if you buy a piano that's got some loose tuning pins or tuning pins that are going to be loose in a few years, that's a big mistake because to replace a set of strings in a piano, it's gonna cost you about four or $5,000. But with our pianos, all brand new strings and pins come automatically with every single piano. So as you can see here, all the bass strings are brand new. Uh, what that does is it restores the tone of the piano back to the way it was when it was new because that's the one thing that does deteriorate with uh, the passage of time is the copper wound strings lose their ability to resonate. And so you get uh, a piano that's going to look new, sound new, play like new, and all the good things that you're looking for for a beautiful grand piano. And what's really nice is that a piano like this generally goes out for well under $10,000. And today, in a grand piano, $10,000 does not get you much in a brand new piano, especially when you consider that a Yamaha six foot, which is a C3, today sells for about 60,000. So understand that the technology in the piano has not changed since the 1970s. It's the same action in the piano. One thing about Yamaha in their higher end pianos, which, which this is, is that it's the same build quality. They didn't go cheaper with pressed cardboard or sawdust wood or plastic parts or uh, plated metal instead of solid brass. Everything in this piano is the same as it was, as it always has been, which has always been the highest grade materials. And uh, Yamaha build quality is most consistent in the piano industry. It's one of the reasons why we, uh, can operate this business like we can because it's very, very easy to service these pianos. You need parts, you need something. Everything always fits consistently on every piano. There's no issue with uh, something not fitting when you get it. And incidentally, everything on this piano that we put in here, uh, if we have to replace a screw, it's from Yamaha. So anyway, I hope that uh, gives you uh, a, a nice overview of what we do with all these pianos. And um, I know that Paul's gonna love the piano for the next 30 or 40 years, and it's gonna be going out uh, very shortly, probably next week. And uh, I want to uh, thank you at this time for watching my video.
and a little bit of Chopin, a little bit of everything, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time out to watch my video. And remember, it's uh, Piano Outlet, Coral Springs, Florida, and the number is 954-803-3319. And my name is Russell. Thank you.